hut in Mexico with three people, three musical instruments, three cats, and a truckload of luggage. Pretty much everything we own at that point in time. You drive. You drive. And unfortunately, from Pennsylvania, where we were, it takes 37 hours to get there. So, you know, what? Uh, one of the things we did learn as we drove from Colorado to Pennsylvania about the cats was... Cats cannot go 10, 11, 12 hours in a car without Stuff. stopping. Stuffed in their cage. <laughs> and uh, we, we learned that the hard way. <laughs> when, when late at night, one night, we ended up with a wet, smelly mess in the back that needed to be cleaned up oh, immediately. Poor thing. <laughs> the poor cat. So we decided that uh, we would not drive uh, you know, more than 10 hours, which for our day limit is probably about 12 hours with steps. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Optimally even less. Yeah. <laughs> the other constraint we had in driving down in Mexico was planning our trip inside Mexico. Mm -hmm. Other expats had let us know loud and clear that you shouldn't drive at night in Mexico and that you want to stay on the main highways. So we figured out that it would take 12 hours to get to Guadalajara from the border. Well, as we already said, we're not driving 12 hours with cats anymore anyway. So we decided we would stop in the middle and just that would take two days. Yeah. Plus, plus it's January and, uh, you know, it, it gets dark. It gets dark early. We're not going to have 12 hours of daylight. Exactly. And uh, we also didn't know, you know how long we'd be stopped at the border. You know, so we, we planned on a stop uh, midway, midway, midway through. So that meant it would take us five days to get to Guadalajara, three days in the United States. Two days in Mexico, five days of consistently driving at yeah. least eight hours a day. Yeah. And, we, and we've learned ourselves that, uh, you know, we, we just can't drive that many days continually. You know, you, you, no one wants to be stuffed in a car for five days, you know, day after day. So we decided to, uh, you know, take a break. And, uh, you know, we, again, we pulled out the map and mm -hmm. said, hey, what city along our route haven't we been to? And we chose New Orleans. Yep. And uh, New Orleans was a two hour, good two hour, I mean, a good two day drive from Pennsylvania. And, uh, you know, then it would take us another uh, pretty fairly long day to uh, to the Mexican border and then two days in Mexico. So right. we decided to uh, stop a day in, in New Orleans. Yep. And, um, you know, we, uh, we did that. Um, you know, first day, first day driving on eventful, getting into New Orleans. Um, you know, fairly early in the afternoon, enough time for a run. Well, actually, it wasn't totally uneventful. You're right. You're right. Not we got hit by a rock. <laughs> and it took... And we had a little a little ding in our windshield, and we didn't really know how we would fix that in Mexico. Yep. So, on the road, police was calling USAA, say, hey, we got a little ding in our in our, uh, in our our car. Yeah, so the guy met us at our Airbnb and, and fixed day. the car. And so, it was good that we actually spent the day in Absolutely. Orleans. So, we had an address he could come to to fix our windshield. Yep. Yep. So, that was good. And, uh, and New Orleans was fun. We, uh, we went for a really nice run. Mm -hmm. We went and explored the Latin Quarter. We went to uh, Bourbon Street for dinner. It was really loud for Gavin, but... Uh, yeah. The second day was really fun. Absolutely, we had a had a really nice time. If you want to just do, do a power uh, power visit to New Orleans, that's pretty much. Yeah, we visited the pretty Buddha much Museum. We, we walked along Lake Pontra Train. We saw some of their old buildings and things. We heard some jazz music in yeah. the street. We walked around the Latin Quarter. We went into some big park that had a tribute to Louis Armstrong mm -hmm. and jazz, and we had really beautiful weather. And we ate classic New Orleans dishes. Exactly. And uh, and yeah. meanwhile, the cats had the run of a two-bedroom apartment, which I'm sure they enjoyed. Well, these guys can't be that good because they don't have a saxophone. Getting photobombed here. The street jazz here in Nolens.
next next day we uh, we were off to off to Laredo yep. and we had booked a uh, booked a, again we're always looking for pet friendly hotels <laughs> and uh, we booked a, a pet friendly hotel and this one was a little bit on the flea baggish side yeah uh, you know so much so much so that uh, <laughs> that Kelly found the, uh, the the torn box springs and decided to hide in there when it was time to go and we couldn't find her couldn't find her couldn't find her. You know, pretty soon we had to uh, dismantle the bed and dump her out. Yeah, eventually we noticed the little tear in the bottom of, bottom of that box springs, and uh, exactly that's exactly what we did. We dismantled dismantled the bed, turned the mat the box springs upside down till the cat eventually fell out. Which taught us something about every single place we ever stayed after that to immediately look for hiding places for Kaylee and plug them up yep. whatever way we can. And, but and that place did have a restaurant called Tlaque Pocket. It did. It, did. <laughs> it was authentic Mexican there. Definitely authentic Mexican. <laughs> as, as much of Laredo is, though. It's yeah. Like, I, mean, yep. I mean, it's pretty much, uh, it seemed to be a pretty much a bilingual, yep. bilingual city. Um, you know, so, uh, so the next day we got up. Yep. Time to go to the border. Time to go to the border. And uh, we, we chose the Columbia Bridge border crossing out of Laredo. It's a little bit... Uh, a little bit out of the way at Laredo, Laredo, but again, you know, the expats are saying, um, you know, there, there's usually, there's not as long of a line, it's not, not lines there uh, that there can be jammed at the, uh, the regular Laredo crossings. So a little bit out of the way and, uh, you know, and we got there. But as we're, as we're going there, Bob was spreading. Next time, we'll talk about what Bob was worried about and how we triumphed over adversity. Till then. Hasta la vista, and may your suitcases be messy too. Subscribe to our channel. Gracias. <laughs>